like everyone to think about the following concepts for a minute. AIDS is a man-made disease. AIDS is a creation of the very government that is supposed to watch out for its people. The AIDS virus used to obliterate certain segments of the population in a brutal form of genocide. Can you think of anything that could be more sinister and downright evil? But wait a second. You say it's not possible? That there's no way our government could have deliberately created and disseminated the AIDS virus? Well, hang on tight because tonight's guest, Dr. Boyd Graves, might make you think differently by the time this show is over. Here's a man who's finally blowing the lid of secrecy off of this subject. So, please welcome Dr. Boyd Graves. This is the Victor Thorne Show with my co-host, Lisa Giuliani. How you doing, Dr. Graves? You know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of still strapping uh, the seatbelt uh, loose here. We've had a <laughs> sit-down kind of day uh, on this issue, the laboratory origin of AIDS, and you know, it's good talking with you guys. And uh, uh, how are things there in Pennsylvania? Still snowy. Cold. Well, you know, we're getting a little blustery storm here in San Diego, but uh, we certainly can't complain. But, no. you know, we had an earthquake over the weekend. I don't know if you guys do that or not. No, I didn't. Yeah, we had an earthquake over the weekend. I think it uh, preceded the earthquake that we had here today in the federal court. Because why the why lawsuit have... against the United States is going to go forward. On this issue here, we have the U.S. Special Virus Program and the flowchart of a secret federal virus development program that paralleled the onset of HIV AIDS and suddenly ended in 1978, just as HIV AIDS began. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you um, why don't you update on update us on what happened today? And we'll take it from there. Sure, and I appreciate that because uh, as this thing is unfolding, um, you know, here we are on the cutting edge, and I am grateful this evening to actually be here uh, uh, on your show uh, with these kinds of things happening. Um, uh, seemingly every day now we're getting progress in our direction. But basically the court today granted uh, the right to proceed in this case without the prepayment of costs. Um, it sounds like a nice term, but uh, in essence, you don't pay the fouling fee. Uh, however, that was a hurdle that had stopped us previously where the judge uh, errantly used a section of the law that uh, allowed her to dismiss the case at the onset uh, as being frivolous. We have crossed that hurdle today. The United States will be compelled to answer the lawsuit and defend the, defend the allegations of the laboratory birth of HIV AIDS via the U.S. Special Virus Program. And, and there is the difference that we have, uh, you guys, in this sense. We are talking about reviewing the federal program, the U.S. Special Virus Program, that no other AIDS expert in the world is talking about today. And we have a problem with that. And what's the problem? Well, I mean, put it in layman's terms. Ten years ago, I tested positive for HIV, and I decided not to sit on my thumbs and wait another year and a half and die. And I thought the best approach might be to figure out the genesis of this pandemic. And over the last ten plus years or so, as the trail began to, to grow more deeply, if you would, toward, in this direction towards the United States, as more and more documents became available, even sworn congressional testimony that the United States was making a synthetic biological agent for which no natural immunity could have been acquired. One that would deplete the immune system so as to allow for the onset of infectious disease. What year do you think that testimony is from? I don't know. What year? That is June 9, 1969. Okay, because I have some information here. Um, would that be before the Congress? Well, that's what I'm saying. That is sworn congressional testimony. Okay. Would that be from a, from a man in the military, uh, MacArthur? Absolutely. You, you have that testimony there? Yeah, it's a Dr. Donald M. MacArthur. That June 9, 1969 testimony has not been uh, addressed by the United States because it clearly states the United States is making 
A synthetic, and synthetic is artificial, correct? Right. Well, Man-made artificial. Agent. Something synthetic is artificial. They are making an artificial biological agent, correct? Correct. One for which no natural immunity could have been acquired, correct? Correct. Uh-huh. One that depletes the immune system so as to allow for the onset of infectious disease. And then he also said within the next five to ten years, it would prob probably be possible to make a new infective microorganism which would differ in certain important aspects from any known disease-causing organism. Absolutely. So different than anything that's ever been made before. Well, that's why they have a problem uh, calling uh, HIV a virus in, in, in its general sense. Because it isn't really a, a virus, it's actually a uh, mycoplasma, and I think you've probably heard that word before. Uh, yes, I have. It's going around uh, a lot as far Lately. as uh, chemtrails, too. Well, chem yeah, chemtrails has, has an affiliation because uh, this federal virus program, the U.S. Special Virus, began officially in 1962. However, shortly following World War II, they did population projections, and there's a memo from the United States State Department, which is February 12, 1948, where George W. McKinnon, in that Foreign Policy Statement 21, states in 1948 that, cut with the niceties, we've got to devise a scheme to deal with the burgeoning populations of the third world. Dr. Graves, the government knew in 1898 that mycoplasma could cause epidemic, and in the early 1900s, they caused it in fowl and in horses. So what is the, what is the role mycoplasma plays in epidemic disease like AIDS? Yes, and, and, and thank you. That, because, you know, Lisa, that is on point with the kind of information that we're trying to share around the world. In the timeline that we have on the website BoydGraves.com, we take the development of HIV back to a U.S. mandated laboratory of hygiene. I guess you've seen my timeline, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Um, oddly enough, the origin, and, and I hope that our, our listening audience has their pens out, uh, because it's very, very helpful to, uh, this information is so shocking and startling at the same time that it's important, since it is verifiable, for people to make an attempt to do so. What you find with uh, HIV and trying to trace its origins, because I thought that would be the best way to, you know, to defeat this thing, if I knew where it came from, that would be the best way to defeat it. And certainly, you know, we were all heard that uh, it was an African and a monkey and a steward and all the gays in the world. <laughs> right? That's what they that's what they say. Yes, that's what they said. And and without evidence of anything to the contrary, we had to accept that, didn't we? That's true. Yes. What the lawsuit is about here in the federal court. The blind scales of justice have to decide between between the official documents of the US Special Virus Program coupled with the congressional sworn testimony as you have there yourself as well in one tray, and in the other tray, you have the, I guess, propaganda of a African monkey origin, because we've got official U.S. documents, correct? That's yes. correct. I have a question. Now, I'd like to just address the mycoplasma issue okay. just a little bit more, because it is so very important. You find mycoplasmas at the heart of HIV and AIDS. And from the science citation perspective, there is a 1995 science paper that has not been refuted that indeed says mycoplasmas regulates the ability of HIV to bud from one cell to another. That aspect of budding, i.e. how it kills a cell and then leaves that cell and goes to another cell, are you following me here? Mm -hmm. This aspect of budding, what that means, the how a tumor develops, a tumor develops by colonization. It kills one cell, it colonizes the next cell. It kills that one, colonizes the next one. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you've got a little spot or a growth, right? Right. HIV does exactly what, uh, well, cancer is a virus, by the way, and, and now they, they you know, what, they, how come they haven't told us? Anyone ever tell you that yet? No. Okay. Victor? 
No, I haven't heard that. Yeah, cancer is a virus, and, and basically what you have here with HIV is that the mycoplasma carrier has been uh, altered, bioengineering. Of course, here you have a flow chart that says we're making a special virus. There you have congressional testimony that says we're making a synthetic biological agent that's called depletes your immune system. Well, why don't we, yeah. um, yet we can't draw the connection. Now, why can't the congressional persons there in Pennsylvania, the sen senatorial persons, the health staffer for each of their offices tomorrow respond to our call for review of the U.S. Special Powers Program? So you're saying that mycoplasmas are at the heart of the U.S. Biological Warfare Program? Absolutely. I'm not saying that, Lisa. This federal program is saying that. Because if you haven't seen the cover of the program yet, there are three six-sided mycoplasmas at the forehead of the cover on these programs, on these progress reports. So why is the U.S. government fixated on genocide? Uh, this venue of genocide kind of goes back a ways, um, and, and it came into view uh, more, um, it came center focus after World War II, uh, that's, okay, now that we're not going to fight anymore, that means we're going to have a lot more people, and, you know, we as a country, you know, became very accustomed to the term uh, baby boom, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it didn't just happen here, the baby boom. Uh, but it happens, you know, all over the world as it did because the world wasn't fighting any longer. But the pro population projections were such that populations would have to be populations would have to be stabilized. And what you find is this is written into the public law of the United States. It's Public Law nine one two one three. Public Law nine one two one three, signed by Richard Nixon on March 16, nineteen seventy. Now people need to people need to go and look it up. Correct. Yeah, the Public Law 91-213 kind of puts into place the U.S. policy of population stabilization, population control. However, they had already been developing the AIDS virus for a number of years at that point. Once they got closer to its development, um, then you saw the U.S. policy decisions go into high gear beginning in April 1969. I think Dr. Horowitz, Lynn Horowitz, covers this point uh, in his uh, he's got a number of gems uh, in his book, uh, but the conference at Fort Detrick on April 4th and April 5th, 1969, the conference was entitled Entry and Control of Foreign Nucleic Acid. Well, this is, um, this is a good place, I think, that we should really start in and maybe put the timeline together. I have some um, points here from, from a paper that I wrote a year or so ago. Um, in 1968, there was a Club of Rome study called Global 2000, where there was a Dr. Aurelio Pisi who founded yes, the Club yeah. of Rome. Yes, yes I'm Pisi. familiar with that. What's that? I'm familiar with the uh, Global 2000. Okay. And it uh, but it comes out in a number of, 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 you see it in a number of U.S. Uh, policies, if you would, particularly as it relates to population, of course, at the Global 2000, but it's, it's pretty well supported by the, uh, you know, Council of Foreign Relations and Mm -hmm. Trilateral Commission and, you know, Club of Rome and the right. Committee of 300 and all of those elitist type organizations that many say are indeed running the entire scenario. Mm -hmm. That uh, article and that point you're making there from the time perspective is, is correct. I do believe that uh, there was the same kind of thing done in 1957 where... Uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. In 1957? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. That the timeline is this: that if you say 1948 to 1978 for the U.S. Special AIDS Virus Program, you're correct. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has a problem because uh, they roped themselves into a corner in two on two occasions. Um, one is the report that they issued last year that is absolutely bogus uh, with respect to the uh, origin of AIDS, and and the other is this venue that um, there was a 1957 case of HIV. 1957, 1959, excuse me, 1959 case of HIV, correct? Yeah, that's, that's, that's false, though. <laughs> Pardon me? That's false that... that well, yeah, I can, I can hardly hear you, and I know we're doing an odd hookup, so, yeah, of, of course, but I, I was highlighting that uh, to say that what the people are saying is this. We are saying... There is no case of HIV 
prior to the February 12, 1948 memo authorizing the pursuit of population stabilization Dr. as it Green. relates to memorandum uh, foreign policy statement number 21 written by George W. McKinnon. So that's time. our position. So, well, there was a case in 1959. That doesn't cut it, if you know what I mean. Right. Right. Because we also find, and the history record shows, and, you know, people need to go look and see for themselves. We do 